Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and I'm very excited because today we get to do a review on the Connect RV65 cell phone signal booster by WeBoost. This is the strongest cell phone signal booster you can get uh, legally that's going to be approved by the FCC because the max you can do according to the FCC is 65 dB worth of signal boost and that's what this one delivers. It's for stationary applications only so when you get where you're going uh, it has a 25 foot antenna pole that you're going to be able to raise up and get you over trees and mountains and obstacles and stuff like that and give you that 65 dB boost. Whereas mobile cell phone signal boosters such as the WeBoost 4GX, which I also have, which is approved for mobile use, you can use it while you're driving around on the road, is only going to give you up to 50 dB worth of boost. So I'm very excited to do this. WeBoost was nice enough to send me this so I could try it out, give it a good test. And so I thought I would do something special and I took this to two very, very remote locations that I sometimes go in my RV and I never have any luck with cell phone si uh, signal out there. So I thought, let's just go for it. I'll, I'll take it up there and we'll see if it actually helps you out in the field in a real situation where I can't make any calls, I can't get any texts and I don't have any data. Uh, just really, really crummy service, the lowest possible smidge of service you can have. And with my Sprint service, it doesn't work at all. Take it out there to these remote locations and see how well it does. So we're going to get to that here in just a little bit. For now, let's focus on what's in the box. First of all, when it shows up uh, from delivery, you're going to have this real big box uh, sitting outside your house right here. And uh, so once we open that all up, what you're going to have inside that delivery box is what we're going to see here, which is the 25-foot telescoping antenna, which is very lightweight, by the way. And then you're also going to have your WeBoost box with all the parts and accessories and installation stuff uh, right there. And I'm going to go ahead and give you a nice look at this pole and how long it actually is. Uh, it's a pretty big pole. And uh, it all telescopes into a very manageable, lightweight little section which is great. I can lift it with one hand and move it around. It's no big deal. And so you can just store that in a closet or anything like that and take it with you wherever you want to go. Now as to uh, get on with what's inside the actual installation box, let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so opening up the box here, we're going to see what we have inside. First off, you're going to have your warranty and manuals and all that good stuff right there. We're going to have our WeBoost signal booster itself and our internal antenna for mounting inside the RV. Then underneath that, we're going to have our external antenna and all the mounting hardware to attach that external antenna to the pole. Underneath that, we're going to have our AC power supply and the mounting hardware for our internal antenna. Also, lots of cabling and plenty for any install and also a very cool flat cable that's going to allow you to run through a window or through your slide at the very end here. Now to attach the antenna to the pole, it's really easy. You just take out the mounting hardware. You're going to attach that a bracket to the uh, antenna right there with two screws. And then we're going to go ahead and use the U-bolts that come with it and all the attachments. You just read the directions. It's really straightforward. I'm not going to go too crazy into it. Um, but you're basically just going to set up the U-bolts and then attach that to the mounting bracket and put on the wing nuts and you are all set. So here you can see the entire kit laid out. We basically have our base right there that the pole fits into. Then we're going to have our two attachment brackets that are going on the side of the RV there, the black brackets there. And then you're going to have your directional antenna. Plenty of cabling, and the cabling does have some disconnects in between, so you can kind of spread that out. Then we're going to have the signal booster itself with its AC power supply. So you're going to mount that in a cabinet or wherever is convenient where you have AC power then a long length of cable and your internal antenna. Okay, so when it comes time to mount the pole, you can see it's very lightweight, very easy to manage, even with one hand straight out, very lightweight. So on your RV, you're gonna really wanna think about where you're gonna wanna put this guy before you install it. And the brackets do slide up and down. You want a nice good amount of space in between them and make sure you're doing this with the base attached as well. Once you have everything exactly where you want it, you may even wanna take a level and make sure that's gonna go straight up and down and then take a pencil and just mark around those brackets. Then you're gonna take the other side of the brackets that came with the unit and you're gonna remove the 3M tape and stick those securely to those positions and then you can slide your pole down into those brackets and you're done. 
So the installation of all these components is pretty much laid out as follows. You have the base of your pole and then your two brackets that are going to attach to the side of the RV. They just slide right in. And then you're going to have your 25 foot telescoping pole with your directional antenna on top. Now that cable is going to run down and then go into the RV. Now the reason this is a, a no hole drilled installation necessarily, uh, you can't get away without having to drill any holes is, is a lot due to uh, the really nice little flat wire they give you uh, that's going to allow you to slip this guy in through a little tiny crack in an open window or if you have a slide on your RV you could easily slide this through the rubber grommet on the bottom or the side and that's going to be your entryway inside the RV making it very easy to connect without drilling holes. And so that cable is going to go in through the outside of the RV and uh, to the inside to your signal booster. And there you're going to need a power source. You can put this in a cabinet or pretty much anywhere hidden that you'd like and uh, plug that into AC power. From there you're going to connect another cable that's going to run to the inside antenna. And that needs to be placed as far away from your outside antenna as possible. WeBoost recommends about 25 feet of distance. But keep in mind your antenna is going to be on a pole that extends about 25 feet. So that distance can be included for the distance in between the inside antenna and the outside antenna. And that's going to attach to the wall with the mounting hardware. It's all pretty, pretty straightforward, cut and dry. So we're not going to get into too much detail on how to do all that, but this is the basic layout of that installation. And it's going to depend greatly on your layout and where you decide you want to mount your pole and outside antenna and other components. But this is the basic layout, so I think we understand that just fine, and we're gonna move on from here. Okay, so now really all you have to do is run your wiring and your other components. I'm not gonna to get too into that. If you would like some tips and tricks and actually see how some of the wiring is done, I did another video in which I installed the WeBoost Drive 4GX. And so uh, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video or possibly a card up top, but definitely a link in the bottom of the description of this video that'll take you to, over to the other channel where I have that video done. And it shows me uh, doing a drill installation and running the wiring and setting up the uh, mounting the hardware and running the antennas and stuff like that. And it'll give you a pretty good indication of what you need to do next. We're gonna skip over some of that and just kind of get to the fun stuff and the testing before this video gets wildly out of hand in length. And so what we're gonna do is drive way out of here. I'm going all the way to Wyoming to a little lake called uh, Twin Buttes Lake in Wyoming. It's just outside of Larimer. And uh, it's pretty darn isolated. And so what we're gonna do is get out there and uh, I'm gonna show you real quick just kind of what the steps are for putting up the uh, antenna. And uh, then we're gonna do some testing to show how much signal we actually got out of the signal booster. So let's go check that out real quick. Okay, so to extend the pole, you start with the top most segment. You're gonna run that all the way up or most of the way up if you want a little more stable. Then you're gonna rotate that collar until it starts to grip around the pole. I can't remember if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. You'll figure it out. So you're gonna rotate that until it gets real nice and snug around the pole. And then you're gonna start on the second segment, running it up until it's completely extended. And then tightening up that collar until it fits tightly around the pole and moving on from there, et cetera, et cetera. And I have to say, I love the way this thing looks when it's fully extended. It just makes me feel like I'm setting up to do some kind of atmospheric test, like a storm chaser. Okay, so this is the second day when I actually test all this stuff out. The first day that I was out there, Sprint is my carrier, and we were roaming with almost no bars. I think I had one bar. But with Sprint, whenever I'm roaming, I'm supposed to be able to access data. I cannot. I never can. I can't access Facebook or YouTube. I can't get emails. I'm lucky if I get a phone or a text message out. Uh, not crazy about Sprint for that reason. They're, they're just miserable. It's always roaming. So uh, we were roaming. We got no calls, no texts the first day, no kind of data, nothing. So as far as I'm concerned, that's having no service. It did show one bar, uh, but we were way down at like minus 100 dB. And uh, we were getting no interaction, calls in or out. So as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much no service. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw this up on the board for you here, which is a graph. And it's showing us at a negative like 102, 105 dB and uh, one or two bars of roaming. But like I say, we received no calls, no data, no nothing for 24 hours. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch on the Connect RV65 
fully extended and uh, pointed in the direction that I knew Laramie was. That's another thing. You're going to have to kind of uh, play around with your pole. There are cell phone apps that will point an arrow in the direction of whatever tower it's connected to. So you can download that before you go on your trip. It'll make troubleshooting your antenna direction a lot faster. Um, but otherwise you just kind of have to play around with it a little bit, trial and error, until all the lights go green and then you're going to be pretty much good to go and uh, play with it until you get the best service. It's not, not that hard, not a big deal. But I pointed it right towards uh, the town of Laramie, which I knew that was the direction that we came, you know, 30, 40 minutes drive out. And we're going to go ahead and switch this guy on. So as you can see, we're at negative 105 dB right here. And once everything starts powering on, it kicks way up there. And uh, you can see we have really, really good service, but it's not done yet. This is what really blew my mind in the first test. It totally buried the needle while we were roaming. So on somebody else's tower, probably Verizon's tower or something. And then it completely shifted to another tower that was further in the distance or had a better service. And we actually get out of roaming into a sprint network and our phones went insane. They just went nuts. So all of a sudden now uh, we were getting emails and Facebook updates and YouTube notifications. And she, she received three or four texts. I received like five or six texts and uh, we were able to make calls. So it was a very dramatic difference because I wasn't roaming. So it switches to a sprint network and all of a sudden everything was open. All of our data was free flowing. And I thought that was pretty darn incredible. I really liked it. I was just really blown away. And I do have the 4GX, which did boost the signal enough for texts and calls, but nothing like that. That was very dramatic. It was, uh, we were nowhere close to reaching a sprint tower or anything like that uh, with the other booster. So this guy just cut right over the top of all the hills and mountains and trees and obstacles and uh, just nailed the cell service. And it was really the difference between night and day. So I was really, really impressed with that. And uh, that's the proof is in the pudding right there, as they say, that's pretty impressive. Um, I, was, I was pretty blown away and we were really happy with how everything worked out with that. Now, I'm not done yet. We spent a couple more days out there and we just got to enjoy complete and total cell service with uh, internet access. As you can see, I was able to look up YouTube and uh, play videos and the whole shebang. So it was really, really neat. But now I wanted to push it even further because the deal with cell phone signal boosters is if there's no signal to boost, uh, you're out of luck. And that, and that remains true. But I wanted to go somewhere where I've never been able to make a call or get a text or anything like that. And uh, that's here in Colorado at a place called the Pawnee National Grasslands. And uh, obviously there's a touch of service out there, maybe if you're lucky on a clear day or something, you'll, you'll get a little, little something out there. But I could never make a call successfully and most of my text messages were not working. So we drove all the way out there to Pawnee, which is very isolated. I'll throw a picture up there for your video or something. Um, we were out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, again, getting absolutely no text messages or phone calls or anything else. And now I'm gonna put this guy back up and uh, let me just review my footage so I actually know what to, to say here. But once we, we got out to Pawnee, I'm gonna go ahead and start that here. You can see that we were buried, no service. You can see it actually go gray and dark. It's trying to grab some semblance of a signal, but there's nothing. There's, it's dropping in and out to roaming. And then boom, as soon as I turn on that, it goes exactly to 65 dB, negative 65 dB. So that was an exact boost of 65 decibels, which is crazy. Uh, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. And then I went and shut, headed and shut it off and you can see it's starting to drop and lose its signal all over again. And uh, once we did that and it sustained 65 dB and I left it on, uh, I was able to make calls. We made some calls and invited some friends if they wanted to drive out and see us, they sure could. And uh, we made some phone calls. So I thought that was really impressive. I've never been able to do that out there before. And as you could see, it was really dipping into uh, nothing. It just kind of went gray when there was absolutely no tower it was holding on to, and then it bounced up to the lowest setting and connect for a few seconds, then drop again. And so there was no way we were getting a call out of there. And then when I hooked this guy up and I even forgot to really point it, I think it was just, I just raised it. I forgot to point it in a certain direction. I guess I got lucky or it connected to whatever was in that direction, but to have it give exactly 65 dB and boost, uh, was really impressive and I was able to make calls and do all that fun stuff. So very, very neat. 
And uh, those are two very isolated locations that I was able to connect to the world in case of emergencies or for fun or anything like that. So I thought that was really, really impressive. Well, that about wraps it up. I've been very thoroughly impressed with this unit. Uh, highly recommend it. The only difference is you really have to make sure that you, you decide which cell phone signal booster is right for you. This is for stationary use only. So when you uh, get to your destination, you set it up, you have the strongest cell phone signal booster around that's allowed by the FCC as of right now in 2018 uh, with 65 dB boost. And then when it's time to go, you just take down your pole, throw it in the RV, drive to the next location, set it back up and you're back in business. If you wanna be able to use a cell phone signal booster on the road, you're gonna be looking at something like the 4G X, which is a mobile uh, cell phone signal booster. So you can, uh, I'll put a link to WeBoost in the description below so you can go to their website and get more information, talk to them. They're very helpful, very nice. And a very big special thank you to WeBoost for sending me this unit so that I could share all this information with you guys. I think that about wraps it up. Um, one more thing that I will say is that this is, this is for multiple phones and multiple carriers. So everybody in the RV is going to be having a boosted cell phone signal experience. It's not just for one phone. It works very seamlessly with multiple carriers and multiple phones. So very, very impressive. And I think that's about all I have to say about that. My name is Jim of Fullwood Adventure Club. Please like, share, subscribe if this helped you out. And until the next video, thanks so much for watching and happy camping.